Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. Today I have this really fun kind of like game assessment platform to tell you about. To be honest, I don't do a ton of tests in any of my classes, in my English classes or my history classes, but it still is really important for me to get a sense of like where my kids are as far as understanding a topic. And it is really important to have a sense of that kind of stuff before you move on to the next unit or whatever. So we tried this thing out last week and it was pretty different compared to the types of platforms that I usually use. And it was really fun. It's called Class Time. And the difference with Class Time compared to some of the other platforms that I've used is that it's supposed to be collaborative. Like everybody needs to do well in order to unlock the puzzle or complete the challenge. So, I mean, I like having a little competition in my class, but I didn't realize how much fun it would be to have everybody working together towards a common goal. So I'm gonna show you how I taught it in my classroom in just a minute. We'll back up to last week a little bit. They do have question banks within the platform, within the website already. And a lot of the questions are from Khan Academy. And Khan Academy is great and they have tons of really good stuff for like math and science. So if you teach any of those subjects, that would be really, really great. I was teaching something kind of specific. It was the geography of ancient China. And so I just put in my own questions. I had had my students read through a bunch of passages um, for the few days before we did this game. And so I just took like questions directly from the readings that we did and I added in 10 of my own questions. It was pretty easy to do that. So now those questions are in like a public library. So you can get questions from other teachers, from Khan Academy. You can put them in yourself. And then the challenge that we did was the puzzle challenge. And I'm like newly obsessed with this puzzle challenge because you can pick your image any image at all and as your students answer questions and as your class as a whole does well they can unlock pieces of this puzzle and reveal the image at the end i had my students play as individuals but you could also let them team up so that they're helping each other but the really fun thing about revealing a picture is like now the way that I think I want to use this more often is within like a longer unit, you know, you always have kind of like smaller lessons. And when we go from one of those smaller lessons to the next one, I can do one of these class time challenges and have my students take the quiz and try to reveal the picture and then the picture will be a clue about what the next thing that we're gonna learn is. So if they don't meet the challenge, if they don't reveal the puzzle, then I'll know that I need to spend that day doing a little bit of reteaching and maybe catching them up. But if they do reveal the puzzle, then we can move on. You could even have the puzzle be like some kind of image that you make yourself and maybe it reveals like some kind of a prize that they are gonna win if they all do well. The possibilities are endless really. I really like the whole puzzle challenge idea. I just thought that was so much fun. And it's really cool to have the challenge like displayed up on your board in the front of the class and then students are working on their own devices and looking up to see how well they're doing as a team. And honestly, that prepares them for work that they'll have to do in the future because really, you know, once you get out of school, not everything is just about you doing well by yourself. You're gonna need your whole team to do well in order for you to be successful. So I kind of like, you know, starting to reinforce that concept already even in middle school. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's go back to last week and I'll show you how I taught it in my class. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna have to get it set up on my other computer over there and I can go back through later and show you. But last night I wrote 10 questions and then I've connected them to an image. So the kids are gonna be creating a puzzle if they get the questions right. So you want everybody else to do well, that's the difference. Like as a group, you all have to do well in order for like the puzzle to appear. So you're cheering everybody else on and you're trying to do your best. So this is the first time I've used this with them. So let me let them in <laughs> and we'll try it out. Can we come in? Yes, you can. Invisible 
copy? Okay, let's go. All right, today we are going to test out a game, except that instead of trying to beat everybody, um, you actually want everyone else to do well so that you can see the, the full image. So like you're all trying to solve a puzzle, but it only will like reveal itself if everybody does well on the puzzle. So it's gonna be on um, Chinese geography that we've been studying. So we'll play this game. And then we're going to move on to some notes about our four main Chinese dynasties, the ancient Chinese dynasties. I'm going to give you a link. It'll show up the link right here. So let's see, let's see how this works. Um, we're starting a new one. Does it work to just type in that code, or do you need me to share it? Okay. Why am I eating? Right. The link is on Google Classroom. <laughs> Or you can just type that in. Okay, so if you are in, it looks like a few people are really fast and they're already in and started answering questions, so they've revealed a little bit of the puzzle for us. I'm the first one. You're the first one? As you get questions right, you reveal some of the puzzle. <laughs> So we did pretty good on this one. Nickname the roof of the world. That is the Tibetan Plateau. Yeah, the Tibetan Plateau. Okay. Only half of us got number two. Um, climate is not good for growing crops, but good for grazing land. Yaks, sheep, and horses. That's the Manchurian plain. Let's see, which one to look like was the easiest? Maybe this one? 
A person who has no permanent home we is a... a... We learned this like in the last... Yeah. So, right. So we've seen nomads, like pre-civilization nomads, and within the within Mesopotamia, and now within Asia. So we've got nomads everywhere, so that's easy. Let's see, which one was probably the hardest? What did we get the worst grade on? Okay, number 10. Temperatures here range from negative 18 to 83 degrees. I the Gobi Desert does have these rapid changes as well. Yeah. So it's not hard to get out. Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay, so that's kind of cool. We can see how we're doing as a class over here. All right, um, let's move on to the next part of our lesson. I am gonna have you close your Chromebooks for now. You might have to open them later, but for now, go ahead and close them. And you are going to need a piece of paper to do a rough draft on. Okay, so my teaching day is over, thank goodness. Let's look at a little bit of the data of what this game showed me. So we're avoiding the names over here because they did just like log in with Google, which was really easy. And so this shows me which questions each kid got correct and which ones they missed. This is like my first impression of using this platform, like a first impressions makeup video, you know, like, does it last? How does it wear? So um, the first time that I tried to use this, it was blocked by my district. So I did have to get it unblocked. So just like be aware of that. There's nothing inappropriate or whatever on this site. I don't know why it was blocked, but sometimes things just get kind of mixed up. So it is unblocked. This time I put the questions in myself because I just wanted them to be really like specifically related to the homework that they did last night. So it was kind of a comprehension check. So I took the questions straight from their homework worksheets and just put those in. Um, but they actually have pre done question sets and a lot of them are from Khan Academy. So that's pretty cool, especially if you teach like math or science or something. I know that our kids use Khan Academy a lot anyway, especially for like math. So they might be kind of familiar with those questions. So um, you can just do questions if you want to. I wanted to do a little puzzle thing. I thought that was kind of fun where it like reveals an image. And then your quiz can kind of be like a comprehension check for the last lesson you did and then whatever picture you reveal can kind of be like your introduction to the next thing that you do. So I thought that was like a really cool way to do it. And the very first question that I got as soon as we were done is, do we get to do this again? So that's always a good sign. I wanna try this again with, you know, some other content. Let me show you the really cool thing that they have. Okay, if we click here on challenges, um, we did, let's see, and there are a bunch of videos that explain like how to do these. We did a puzzle challenge and I thought that was really cool. Um, these ones are like especially cool though because instead of like a picture being revealed before your students as they answer questions correctly, um, they can like build a jungle roller coaster or they do this, they like fight city pollution or they can build the tower bridge. I thought this one's so funny. Recharge Poli the robot, resupply the International Space Station and then like we did these puzzle ones. So these are really cool and they already have questions in there. So for example, let's do like the, the jungle roller coaster one. Um, let me show you what it would look like in class. <laughs> this is the music in the background. So this is what would be happening as they are answering questions. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, wait a minute, look at this. Ah, you can make a sloth. Oh my gosh, that is too funny. Huh, you build a sloth. So that was really cool to try out today. I know it's always just like a little bit nerve wracking as a teacher to try out any kind of new website or new app or new technology because you're just not sure if there are gonna be any glitches. But seriously, every time I was confused, my students were like, no, you just click on that. Like I forgot to activate the questions. It was still on like deactivated. I think because like if you're just waiting for them all to log in so that they all start at one time, then you can leave the questions deactivated. So um, I just had to like push the button and then it was fine. And then it was so cool that they wanted to help each other because they want everybody else to do well. So I think that's really the main idea of this platform is that everybody does well and you want to help out your classmates because then you get to see like how the picture turns out or how the roller coaster works. 
and it doesn't just give it to you like if everyone doesn't do well it's not going to happen so you might have to redo it you could start a new session or you just have to study better for next time you know so I like that it kind of like holds them accountable too and then you get a lot of data later and you can see how you did as a class how kids did individually okay and I am trying to stick to my New Year's resolution of grading every Wednesday at the moment I've only collected like written work from my first and seventh period history classes that's why they're white and then these blue ones are my English classes I do have some online stuff I need to grade Ugh, I actually prefer grading like handwritten stuff it's just easier to keep track of but I need to go on Google classroom and grade some other things I don't know why you guys I don't know why I can't keep my desk clean hi guys let me just pop in one more time I was just checking my email and the people from class time reached out to me and they wanted to give you a code so that you can use this site for free okay so this is cool so you can always do a 14 day free trial where you just test out the site and see if it's something that your kids like and something that's useful for you. Just double checking here. So with that, you can get all the challenges and upload your own images. But they also want to give you two free challenges of your choice. So you can use the code TooCool4MS, which is my Twitter handle, by the way. And they said you enter that code where you would see the price. So enter that code instead and it will be free. And you can use it with any puzzle or animated challenge. And then you can keep those two challenges even after your trial period expires. So that's good news. I will leave all of that information in the description bar below. So this way you can test it out and then even keep some of those challenges for free. So I would suggest personally one of the puzzle challenges and then maybe like the roller coaster challenge or something like that. And you can put your own questions even into those challenges as well. Don't type on my computer, please. Okay, I'm gonna leave you here. You wanna say bye, Jensen? No. Say bye? Hi. 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 Say bye, have a good day. Have a good day.